hey 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 so in the last video that i shared i shared a testimony of someone being delivered from demonic oppression um and it was done um or or that the deliverance was led by a woman from a church i was attending back in 2017 um but this testimony will be about my experience um you know casting out a demon um and so here we go I was walking uh, the streets of uh, New York City and Harlem, and you know I was witnessing um, and giving to the homeless. And I met uh, a young man. So in the last video that I shared, you know we had, you know, met a young woman. Um, and well, she wasn't that young, <laughs> but we we met a woman. Uh, in the process of, of of that that same ministry that outreach that we were doing, and so we regularly went out uh, on Friday nights to feed the homeless, and um, you know, and so we developed relationships with a lot of the homeless uh, in, in the area around Central Park. And so this time there was a a man that we met. Um, nothing, nothing really happened. You know, people, they were just thankful for the food that we gave. Um, but I was walking the streets of Harlem and I met him again. I saw him again. Um, I, I was not witnessing. I don't think at that time, I think I was just coming home and he had recognized me and he called me pastor. Um, you know, um, can you pray for me? He was saying, he was saying like, I don't, I don't want to be out here. I don't, I don't want to be doing this anymore. He was saying, I have a girlfriend. She really loves me. She's so good to me. And, you know, I live with her and, you know, and her kids. And, you know, I, I just, I, I can't stay out of the street. I just, just so hard for me. He was saying, here, what I want you to do is I want you to take, um, take my number. And, or actually he was, he was asking me to take his girlfriend's telephone number. And he was saying, I want you to call. I want you to call her in the morning to see whether or not, you know, I've come home, right? Whether or not I came home, because I guess he wanted accountability. Um, I don't know. Maybe he knew he was going to get into something that night or he, he, he thought he might get into something. Um, but he had a moment of clarity and he was just reaching out for help. And so I was like, OK, you know, and, and I prayed for him. I took the number. It was very, very strange. Um, but anyway, uh, the next morning, um, I think that was a Saturday night. So if, if because I know Sunday, Sunday was it was the day that I called his uh, girlfriend. Um, so I must have met him on Friday night when we we're going out for ministry. I think maybe Saturday the next day he saw me coming home and, you know, reached out to me in that way. Sunday morning, I called his girlfriend to see if he went home, and he had not. He had not gone home, and you know, but she was surprised, like, "Who is this?" and what? Now, you know, I'm like, "I'm a minister. I met him." You know, he told me to call you and stuff. Like, if he does, just to make sure he got home, and you know, she just started, you know, just unloading, you know, uh, just her testimony of having gone through so much with this guy and, you know, you know, and she was just, you know, just at the end of her rope with him. Um, and so she would regularly have to go in her car and go find him, go drive around looking for him. I mean, he would, she was exactly what he described. She really loved him. And, you know, he was kind of saying, like, how he didn't deserve her. Um, but she was really committed to him, you know. And she wasn't even married to him. Uh, but, you know, she she was, she just loved him. And so she would, she was saying that there was times where she would go pick him up. And, and he would, when they stopped at the light, you know, just kind of hop out the car you know, just to run run off and, and go back to the drugs. He was saying that he would, he would say that it called him, that they were speaking to him and telling him to come and telling him to do things. She would buy him brand new clothes. Um, he wasn't really working. She was. She would buy him expensive clothes. He would just take it and sell it 
to get more drugs. It, it was really bad, and it was a heartbreaking situation. And so she was like, when when she heard that I had saw him, she said, where did you see him? Where was he in what area? And I told her, and she knew the area, and she knew that he hung out there. And so um, that was in the morning. Uh, I think I went to church that day. Um, when I came back, it was like at nighttime, and she had called me, and she told me that he had come home. And I was like, wow, you know, he had come home. And, and I was like, okay, awesome. And then I felt compelled to go over there. Um, I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me to go over there. And so, I, you know, I asked her, like, if you, would you mind me coming over? I, like, I want to talk to him. I want to pray for him. She was like, no, it's, it's fine. And so, so I went over there. Here I go, going to a complete stranger's house, you know, going, going somewhere where I've never been, woman I've never met. It's in the projects or public housing, to be politically correct. Um, and, um, when I got there, um, he was, he was in the room, he was in one of the rooms and he was kind of like curled up in the bed and, you know, uh, he saw me and I think he was a little embarrassed, um, for me to see him that way, um, but, you know, I talked to him a bit. And then I began to pray. And I began to address, you know, the demon on the inside of him. And I, and I told him to come out and to, to leave him alone. And, you know, carrying on like this. And uh, um, in the name of Jesus and scriptures and whatnot. And the guy, the guy didn't seem to react to it at all. I didn't. There was no demon talking back to me saying, oh, shut up, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. Like, that didn't happen at all. Um, nothing like that. He just was curled up in a ball, and, you know, he would say little things here and there, but but it was clearly him talking, not a demon, nothing. It was just like, so, you know, I prayed for him, and, and you know, and then, um that was it you know i spoke to his girlfriend for a little bit longer and i said i i um left and so um the next day i called and i checked on him and she said that he actually got up and he went to to rehab and she was saying she had been trying for a long long time to get him to go back to rehab. And he will always say he was going and make excuses and this and that and everything. But this time he actually, he actually went. And I was like, really? She was like, yeah, really, you know? And I believe that when we had that encounter in, in that bedroom, even though, um, even though there were no seeable signs that, the demon had left him, that he was in fact freed and freed long enough for him to go to, to have the presence of mind and be in his right mind to go into to rehab. And so he did that. And then in this story, like the last story, I had the opportunity to see. Uh, well, actually, to, first of all, to speak to her, she was saying he was doing well that he put on weight, that he, you know, he was, he was doing his thing. And then I actually got to see him, I actually got to see him again. And, and she was right. He looked, he looked amazing. Um, he looked amazing. And I spoke to him. I was like, Hey man, you staying out of trouble, man? What's, you know, what is, what's going on? And he's like, he's like, yeah, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm staying out of trouble. But, but the fact that he was in my neighborhood again, was not a good sign. Um, his uh, his girlfriend and where he used to live uh, was nowhere near uh, where I lived. Well, it, it was a good ways off. I mean, I shouldn't say nowhere near, but 
uh, it was several avenues and blocks a- away. Um, it was not his general neighborhood, and you know there was no reason for him to be over there, especially when that was the area where um, you know he faced the most temptation. Um, and so, I did see him again a little bit after that encounter when he had been restored and once again he had fallen back uh, into drug abuse and I think um, if you watch the last video the same thing held in this situation he did not you know give his life to the Lord at any point Um, he did not receive the gift of the Holy Spirit nothing like that and so um, he had no defense against, you know, the spirit coming, coming back into him. So those are two experiences that I had. Um, I have others, um, but you know, they involve certain people. And so I want to be careful about sharing it. So I, maybe I'll, maybe I will, uh, at, at another time. Um, but in the two testimonies that I've shared, uh, in both situations, it seemed like nothing happened. But what followed immediately were changes in the person's behavior and choices that were, you know, not like what they were doing just one day prior. Now, someone might say, oh, well, how do you know? How do you know? We're talking about people who were hooked on drugs for years at a time, and they have an encounter with a believer who was specifically praying against demons, specifically praying against, um, you know, spirits that might have them bound, causing them to participate in bad habits and immediately following them. They following that they have a massive dramatic life change. Um, they make a decision that they had no power to make prior to it. And, and and so for me, when I look at that, it's a surefire sign that uh, speaking to the demon and casting it out and telling it to leave um, did have an impact. And so, you know, sometimes we're looking for the dramatic, like in the movies, we're looking for the demon to talk back to us. And that has happened. You know, that does happen. But not always. Right. Not always in, in my experience does a demon speak through a person and you know and and you know and there's a big dramatic scene and then they leave right you know and so that might impact your faith you might feel like oh nothing's happening i'm I'm saying all this i'm doing this nothing nothing's happening it's not working but but we don't walk by what we see right we walk by faith and the whole time when i'm praying i can hear the holy spirit telling me what to say and, and what to do Um, when I'm engaging a demon. And so that's what you do. You just trust what the Holy Spirit is saying and you trust and you walk by faith and not by sight. You're not looking for the drama and and all of that when when you're addressing the demons. You do that and and you leave it there. You stop when when God tells you to stop. But, But the important part of it is to just implore them to receive the gift of salvation now some people they won't right they'll, they'll tell you oh i'm not ready you know I'm, I'm not ready for that now or this and that you know but you know do the best job you can of, of telling them to give their life to the lord but ultimately it's up to them ultimately it's up to them um but yeah that that, that was my experience um casting a demon out of a man in harlem <laughs> um you know, I, I pray that uh, that he will find deliverance, uh, full deliverance, um, and and salvation. Um, yep. So let me know in the comments what you thought about the testimony. If you ever experienced anything like that, or um, if you've cast out a demon, or if you know it was different, um, you know, for you, if you, if a demon was cast out of you before. Uh, Please let me know what you think uh, in the comment section. But until the next time, God bless, guys. Take care.